tell y'all a story. I'm gonna tell y'all the story of Black Lives Matter. In 2013, when George Zimmerman was acquitted for the murder of Trayvon Martin, an 18 year old black boy guilty of leaving his home being black. When he was acquitted, Alicia Garza wrote a letter, a love letter to black people. In that letter, it ended with three words, black lives matter. Patrice Cullors saw those three words and recognized that in it would resonate the inherent value, the incredible brilliance and fire that is blackness. Right. And so a hashtag was created. And from that hashtag, from that idea, it turned into a vision, and a vision actualized into a movement. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the history of Black Lives Matter has become an international movement with over 28 chapters in the world from Toronto to Ghana, across the United States. When the National Guard pull, pulled into and poured into Ferguson, people in Palestine were making hashtags and telling those folks on the ground how to neutralize tear gas. Because of that movement, we can make connections. We know that the same company that manufactures that tear gas that was President Ferguson is the same company that manufactures it and sends it to Palestine to support Zionism. Because of that movement and because of Black Lives Matter, we recognize that the same troops that are being trained in Israel are being trained here, yeah. are being trained in Canada, yeah. and being trained in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. We know this. When Mike Brown was killed, the world knew about it. We had over 3,000 people come out in Toronto. There were over 3,000 people that came out in London, in, the, in London, UK. There were movements all over the states and all over the world. When Sandra Bland was killed, say her name. Say her name. Say her name. Sandra Bland. Say her name. Sandra Bland. We were able to make connections around the ways in which police brutality and gender manifest itself and sexuality on the bodies particularly of black women and black women who are disabled and black women who are sex working and black women who are poor and sex working and disabled without status and who are HIV positive. We know. This is a movement that has been led at the heart of it, by queer and trans people, by gender non-conforming people, by poor people, by unemployed and underemployed people. This is a movement that centralizes those who are most marginalized, that puts them at the forefront to lead because there is nobody more equipped. This year marked the 49th anniversary of the founding of the Black Panther Party. October 15th. When I think about the 10 point platform that came out of the Black Panther Party, we know that every single point from unemployment to disenfranchisement to police brutality, every single point is just as valuable now as it was then. It's just as important now as it was then. we know some things. We know that a movement that was called too militant and too radical at the time brought together some of the greatest revolutionary minds of this century. Yeah. Because of that movement, because of that movement, we know that Cointel Pro tactics and the ways in which the police and the government and the state will do anything to crush black liberation, we know better than we've ever known before. Because of that movement, 
We know that the greatest national threat to this country was breakfast food programs for black children. And I want you to look at these black people here. Look at them behind me, these ones who have been the leaders of your movement. I need y'all to understand something. The implications Ugh. of the work that we do will follow us for the rest of our lives. Yes. Right. That means, that means that we know, as these brilliant folks have said, that we are on the right side of history, but it comes at a cost. I need you to look at these people and see them because it follows us for the rest of our lives. Ask Asada Shakur, no. who is currently exiled. Ask Mamiya, who is still in jail. Ask the countless black men and women and non-binary and trans folks who died because of that movement for our liberation today. Recognize what these people are doing for you, for us. that movement, we have the tools, the rhetoric, the strategies, the analysis, we can make the connections. The movement is international, but I want to bring it down to something because here's, here's the reality. As good looking as these people are, we, didn't, we are not remarkable people. Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale were not remarkable people. They were going to community college and recognized the circumstances that they were in were in fact remarkable. We become remarkable when we choose to fight for freedom, when we choose to fight for justice, when we choose to fight for liberation. It is not enough to say that they were just remarkable. We choose to become remarkable. We too can be remarkable. For anyone who has ever wondered at home around the dinner table, watching something at, you know, on your, on your way to work, talking on the phone with somebody, looking at some of these protests and movements, if you have ever in your life thought for a moment, what would I have done? if I had been around during the civil rights movement? What would I have done if I had been around during black liberation struggles? You do not need to wonder. It is happening now. Yeah. So when, so when you are asked what you were doing when black people were getting free, when you are asked what you are doing when in getting free, we're getting everyone else just a little more freer with us. Yep. When yep. you are asked two days from now, five days from now, 10 years from now, 49 years from now, when you are asked what, what you were doing when black people were getting free and in getting free, we're getting everyone else a little more free with us. Have an answer that you are proud of. Yep. that inspires you. Have an answer that inspires your family. Have an answer that inspires the next generation of movement builders to come. That's right. When you are asked what you were doing when black people were getting free, and in getting free we were getting everyone else, just a little more free with us, tell them that you stood in City Hall when a community was crushed by the state after occupying it for 18 days. Tell them that you stood with Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter Minneapolis. today, look at each other, look at the people up here, and say to me this, I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. I got your back, bro.
Now look here, y'all. You said it. Look here, y'all. You said it. Now make it true. Oh, God.